And you're back on the bonus stage right here on Rage. Okay, first there was the trackball mouse, then the laser mouse, and now Blue Track, Microsoft's new technology for its peripherals, allowing you to use your mouse almost on any surface. And this is what I found out. Click it. Hello, Daryl here. You're watching Razer TV. We're here at Movida at St. James for Microsoft 26th anniversary and annual hardware launch. Okay, I don't really know much about it. I just know that you're going to unveil new products, including mice, mouse, mice, mouse, mice. And we have brought along our secret weapon to challenge. Trackball. Yeah, yeah, look at that, look at that. Trackball. On top of being the fashionable art mouse that comes with a carry case, you actually have the small receiver at the side. It's a magnetic micro USB receiver, so I will never think of losing my receiver. On top of that, this metal hinge endures up to 10 kg of pressure. It is very thin, the thinnest one on the market today. It has a mirrored surface, it comes with a magnetic attachment, something you can plong on your laptop. Okay, you could either turn it outside or inside. We've got some cool video effects that we just like to show off. With the live cam show, you can actually increase the size of your eyes, you know, with no, no extra effort. <laughs> and I think Yen talks too much. Uh-huh. Hello. Yeah. yeah. All right, okay. Okay, enough. Who here plays games? The main features for this is really the detachable keyboard. Uh, keypad, which can plonk on either side. We've had gamers saying that, hey, you know, your keypad gets in the way of my mouse. Some people said, I want a portable keyboard that I can put in my backpack. You know, gamers love to cheat. They love to have a keyboard that lets them execute what you would normally need three or four sets of hands for, okay? What gamers do is that they get so fast at this game, they end up, instead of Clicking using a mouse, they use their keyboard, the keyboard, they press T, they press F1, F2. Sounds the cool thing about this macro recording Rifle is that ready. it not only allows you to record a whole bunch of complex Rifle commands, it remembers your timing. If you took three seconds to press the next Rifle key, it's ready. gonna play back three seconds with that same three second delay. Okay, Daryl here. I'm here with uh, Ian Tan, the PR dude from Microsoft. Hi. Okay, okay, we originally came with the intention of challenging using our very, very cool trackball mouse. Very retro, but unfortunately, you can't even like detect it on the computer because it's not plug and play. So we have to make do. And uh, Ian has a lot of cool, nifty gadgets here. Mm -hmm. So, Ian, bring us through the challenge. What do I need to do? Okay. Uh, I'd like to show you our latest mouse. Okay. This is the Blue Track mouse mm. okay, that we are launching today in Singapore. This is the Explorer Mini mouse. Okay, the Blue Track is the technology behind it. So, what's so cool about it? If you see the bottom, uh, there's a blue beam. Okay, this beam is uh, LED beam that is different from laser or optical mice. Now, uh, it is four times larger than laser. Okay, what? And it has a blue wavelength of light, has a higher angle camera inside. So, in short, it takes a very accurate picture of the surface, any surface out there. Okay, uh, so if you look at the surfaces that we have here today, we've got carpet, mat. We have polished granite. We've got a very difficult surface, uh, frosted glass. These uh, surfaces, right, pose a huge challenge to any existing mouse out there. Using the competitive products, say uh, laser mouse. Okay. Okay. Try drawing a circle first on the normal surface. Uh, oh. Okay. Your okay. circle is uh, very big. You need some training, okay? Okay. Yes. Yeah. Okay. okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. Now try using it on polished granite. Okay. Okay, so that's why it's not detecting, right? Yeah. At all. It's not moving at all, right? Mm. Oh, it does move, but... But very erratic. You can't draw a circle yeah. properly. So mm. this means on such surfaces, you can't use your mouse and your PC, you know. You might want to try on a carpet as well. Okay, you see some difficulties there. Whoa. 
then you'll find that hey man your mouse is going over the place now the yeah. reason why is because the rug has a lot of uh, you know all this like filaments or whatever stuff you yep. call them right and the laser gets trapped inside mm. and doesn't bounce back and doesn't yep. get captured right so for this sort of surfaces the polished granite is too reflective the laser gets confused mm. the optical sensor gets confused now if you were to try our blue track mouse okay 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 here we go oh! Okay, it's much easier. Perfect, right? Yeah. Okay, try doing it on a carpet. The carpet mat. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. Yep. So as you can see, the the blue track um, beam. Okay, what it does is it really takes a really really accurate picture of the surface itself. Okay. Frosted glass. Um, Dun, da, da. It's a very difficult okay. surface. Yeah. Okay. But as you can see, your mouse is still moving, and it still works. Yeah. Very well. Okay. The hmm. caveat is that um, there's no optical laser or blue track mouse now that can work on pure see-through glass. You know, window panes or mirrors. Okay. That's still the final frontier for us. Okay. If you were to try, you know, try using this this mouse. Okay. On this surface, you'll find that man. It's this is a laser one, right? Yes, this is yeah. the laser one. And it doesn't even like really detect or move. Yeah. Yep. In coming months. We're going to show off a new gaming mouse with blue track technology, and that doubles the specs of any top gaming mouse today. And that's called the X8. Now, unfortunately, I don't have a sample today, but when we do, you guys. All right, will be the first Razor, Razor will be the first Razor, to test man. it, man. Okay. All right. Thanks Thank a lot, you. Ian. Thank you. All right, Daryl here, and you have been with us on uh, Rage on Razor TV. So, okay, normally my eyes aren't this big, but maybe you never know. Catch you in the studio. And that was our beautiful freak, yeah. Daryl Chin, the, the tech knight himself. Well, I, hmm. it's Gadget of the Week time, baby! Boom! That's right, we checked out the Nokia N96, which is a multimedia powerhouse within its light little shell. Yep, hmm. it is one of the latest Nokia phones which are compatible with the N-Gage service. And here's a preview. I'm wondering if, I, if, if I've got the stuff. Do you think I have an easy job? Do you think I, 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 I enjoy being a, 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 a paint? All right, and what do we have here? Uh, okay, we have for today's preview mm -hmm. the Nokia N96. Okay, most of you have seen the ads and you know, the price tag that comes along with it. It's about $1,200 a pop yep. uh, and it's quite hard hitting on the wallet. But yeah, okay. is it worth it? Is it worth it? That's the mm. question. I mean, you were looking and checking out the tech specs and I was like, sort of like checking out like the N-Gage aspect That's of this right. phone, right? Mm. So now, tech-wise, according to Nokia, the N96 fuses leading edge technology, right? Yeah. Features with a 5 megapixel camera with Carl Zeiss lens, right there. And uh, it also has 10 by 10 navigation and 24 gigs of memory, internet browsing, uh, preloaded engaged game, accessing a 2.8 inch screen. There you go, beautiful. Okay, that means that it's up to 40 hours of video mm -hmm, that's right. can be transferred from your PC and stored on the N96. Yep, the inbuilt camera can capture decent quality video. Uh, I mean, it goes up to what, 30 seconds? 30 mm. frames per second, right? Yep. And uh, the stills here can be location tag. Now, what, what is location tag? Uh, basically, like geotagging and sort of like, you know, like where you took it. Mm -hmm. uh, you can actually tag, like, okay, the location and then, you know, you can sort of arrange all your pictures accordingly. Within the phone itself. Yep. Beautiful, mm. wow. Okay, so how's the Wi-Fi for the phone? It's great! It's great, yeah? <laughs> yeah, yeah? I think it was uh, pretty speedy. Uh, I tried a few uh, uh, websites and, you know, like, news websites, Google, all pretty quick. Check my um, Gmail. Nothing. Oh, you check your Gmail on the phone? Yep. Wow, cool. So, I mean, any, any uh, like, uh, really content-heavy websites like YouTube and stuff like that? Uh, I, I did check like a video or so and there was no like lag in playback, so it was okay. <laughs> Since you're on games now. That's right, we're gonna talk about now. engage. Yep. Okay now N96, the N series, this is the is an engage enabled phone, hmm. right? Meaning it actually taps in onto the whole engage application. In the previous engage from no Nokia, it was actually yep. a phone by itself. It wasn't like a software. Yeah, it was a separate thing, right? Yeah. It was a bit funky. It was a hardware, engage yeah. was a hardware. So there was an engage one and an engage two. Engage two was a little bit smaller. And then out of nowhere, they came out with Engage enabled phones. Very smart move, I think. Very smart move. So basically, certain phones can tap onto this game network and certain phones can't. Mm. So this is one of the phones which can. As you can tell, as you can see, there's a keypad here. And if you flip on the other side, there's sort of like these controls uh, for your multimedia. So this can be, and it lights up um, 
pertaining to, to the multimedia which you're viewing. So now it's a movie, so you can see there's the forward, there's a pause, there's a stop, and then there's a backward button. Um, now I had a chance to actually play Force Unleash, which is okay. which is actually on this phone. Yeah, that's a Star Wars. Yeah, that's right? a Star Wars. Star Wars: The Force Unleash, and it was a really good um, adaptation for for mobile phones. Yeah. Obviously, it wasn't as as engaging. Sorry. Pardon the pun, but yep. not en- as engaging as like, like you know, like the, the PlayStation's uh, yeah. and the and the Xbox games. But I think for a game by itself, I think the story was was really good. Mm. For this phone, I think uh, uh, it was one of the better phones that we have uh, seen. But one thing was that the price was a bit steep. And how much? How much did it cost? I think about one thousand two hundred and above. So just over a thousand without, without contract. Without contract. Mm. But it's got a lot of multimedia functions mm. and it's got a lot of memory. So if you want like uh, to play movies off your phone, this is definitely one of the. Surf the internet. Yeah. Yeah, man. I mean, I was always looking for for a phone that played games or a, or a, a portable gaming system that could yeah. call someone. And even though it's not a very powerful machine mm. for in terms of graphics and sound. It still uses like MIDI sounds for, yeah, for the games, game, but that's yeah. like on the software side, not so much on the hardware side. So I, I, I still think that this phone is, is worth getting if you're into games. Oh well, that's the end of the bonus stage. That's right, stay tuned for the next level. Next week. Woo! Booyah!